next thing I know, we're sitting in the back of this car, riding down the road that Stalin marched everybody out to the salt mines on. And I mean, there was nothing anywhere but snow and ice. And on the, you know, way in the distance, like a line of trees. And you know, it's like, where are these people taking us? Well, adopting a child is a, a massive leap of faith, especially if you adopt internationally. I got on a plane with my sister-in-law because my husband couldn't come. So it was, gonna, it was all on me to pick a baby. And um, that was a leap of faith. To fly into Siberia, just like jumping off the ledge of a building and hoping that, you know, some, somebody would, you know, run out there with the net because we'd never met the people we were going to meet. We didn't know what it was going to be like. Didn't know where we were going. Didn't know what baby we were meeting. The description and the information I was giving about the baby that we were supposed to meet changed eight times before we left the hotel. And then they told us, well, we've got someone we want you to see out in Kungor, like that meant anything to us, but it was three hours away from where we were. And, um, you know, would you want to just go out there? We really don't have a lot of information we can give you right now. I said, yeah, let's go. And we didn't know any, had no idea what we were going to find when we got there. When we finally did get there, they started talking about the baby to us, and you know, the translator was explaining all the details about him. He was starving to death. He was practically deaf. You know, he had rickets. And you're just listening, going, uh, you know. And at some point, um, they brought the baby in. I mean, this was like a woman in uh, that looked like a babushka, like right out of central casting. She just puts this giant pink wrapped bundle in my arms with like 500 blankets on the top of it. And I'm like, uh, and I said, is this the baby? And then they, you know, and they were like, yes, you know, and I started wrapping back the layers and all I could see was about this much of the, of his face. And, um, they dressed him up in what they considered was a special outfit to look good for us, and it was a little girl's pink snowsuit with a white lace, lacy collar on it. And um, I looked down and saw these two little blue eyes looking at me, and I just was like, my God, that's him. That's him. And I looked at my sister-in-law and she said, that's who we came for. Everything, I, it was like, I don't care what they tell me about him. This is, this is, this is, this is who I came to find. The other part of the odyssey began with not, not you know, just anything you do in Russia is, and I mean, we just did not know what we had in store for us. My sister-in-law and Allah and I did not know how to work the toilets. They have a very different type of, you know, we broke every toilet from Kungor to Moscow. When we were on our way back on the first trip, supposedly yet another person was going to meet us in Moscow, and it was a man. And because we had like a 20-hour wait for our flight, we were going to be going to his apartment. And so we, you know, this dude picked us up and took us to his apartment <laughs> that actually had padded walls, um, red leather padded walls. <laughs> I mean, you know, just leap of faith. I'd always said in my whole life, someday I will have a baby. Someday I will have a child. And that I, it wound up that nothing stopped me from having him. You know, I didn't get to have him the way I thought I would, but, you know.
Actually, I told you I could tell you some stories. <laughs>